Half a day Guam and welcome to KWAM News Extra. I'm Sonia Artero. For our second day of interviews observing Crime Victims Rights Week, we'll highlight the work of the Alley Shelter. In an effort to help victims of domestic violence and spouse abuse or neglect, the Alley Shelter was established more than a quarter of a century ago by Catholic Social Service. At their shelter, which is open around the clock, women and their children may receive short-term shelter in a safe and comfortable environment, as well as guidance and counseling toward their future lives. But here to expound on the type of services they provide is the shelter's program director, Sister Bridget Perez. Sister Bridget Perez, thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. Thank it's our pleasure too. and honor to have you. So tell us the meaning behind the name Varro. Ali. I'm so sorry, Ali. Ali sorry. Ali, well, Ali is the nautical word really meaning to uh, come and rest a while from a storm. And when we call about storm, you know, is that uh, we're talking about domestic violence, uh, you know, what causes um, all this unpleasant drama, you know, uh, when it comes to a relationship, when women and men tends to have um, a an, an lack of understanding, you know, of what family is all about. I apologize yeah. for making that mistake of Varro because Varro is up next. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. So I don't want to confuse the two groups. Since your shelter is open around the clock, what are the hours of operation as far as intake is concerned? Is it something because you want to respond immediately, you want to be able to open around the clock? Or is there certain hours of operation for which the ladies need to be in the Actually, rooms? it's uh, 24 hours services, and that means from 7 to 7, around, it's as, uh, 24 hours, 7 days a week. So um, the women, you know, uh, problems can really arise either 3 o'clock in the morning, and then that's when we have calls, you know, so we address the, the calls. And you wanted to make that call to ensure that you're able to address the community's needs. That's right. Yeah. Now, there are many types of abuse. Give us an example of the types of abuse you deal with most here on Guam or with. Well, actually, the um, most um. common here would be alcohol abuse, you know. Um, Men sometimes, you know, drink and not realize that they are going behind, behind, beyond the, the limit. And that's when sometimes when they come home or when they're at home, that's when sometimes uh, problems escalate, you know. Um, that's when uh, things comes out and, you know, uh, they're just not understanding, uh, you know, in, within the family. So that's when alcohol would be about the most... Uh, and also unpleasant, I would say, uh, relationships that have no grounds, good grounds and uh, no commitment. And then that's when uh, two individuals are not sure. And then they, that's when problems arises too. Or they just sometimes they don't get the idea of what we call um, managing their, their um, anger. They just don't know the level of, you know, when to suppress and reason things out more. No, yeah. I wanted our viewers to better understand and appreciate your group uh, and, and how it is that you react to these crisis intervention situations, if you will. Normally, when there's a case of domestic violence, the police are called to the scene. Where do you guys fit in? Are you then referred from the police? Is Actually, uh, sometimes the women doesn't have to call the policeman. They call themselves or a neighbor would call. They don't have to be placed, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be referred by police to stay at the shelter. Uh, the women can call the shelter themselves or a neighbor or a friend can refer them to the Ali shelter. Now tell us about the shelter atmosphere at Ali. Um, I know I cannot disclose the location, right. but um, the house is a very nice, livable residence, um, well furnished. The women can stay there um, as long as we're finished with this, whatever support that we need to do. And it takes time sometimes to help them out with their financial or legal papers. Yeah. Tell us typically the kind of support that they face. Uh, obviously, they need a place to stay for mm -hmm. as long as it takes to get their, you know, get them going. Uh, oftentimes, do they have to find a job to support themselves or their children? Well, first of all, if they have a skill, then it's very easy to find a job. But if there's none, first of all, we go to the financial assistance. If they're not on food stamp, then we do that. If they have babies, then we uh, make them apply for a week program. Mm -hmm or welfare. Then from there, we sort of find, you know, look into the life of the women and say, are you capable of working? And of course, if it's a legal residence also, because sometimes you deal with um, illegal resident. Um, then when we are finished with all the other support services that we network with, public health or 
public defender or Guam Legal Service or the marshals. Uh, we have so many that we you know deal with. Then it makes it becomes easy when the women can find a job and then apply for a block grant also. What is the normal turnaround time for the clients to stay there at the shelter? Well, we usually give them 45 to 60 days, but we try not to make them stay longer so that they can move on, you know, and not be depending on the shelter also because it can be, you know, lax and sit back and, and not do much. But, you know, we, we want to empower women so that they can really do uh, faces that they can survive. Sounds like a great And, of trip. course, we have also right now we just started um, a transitional home for women that means if they finish at Ollie so they don't have to be